All right, I wasn't gonna do a video of this, but the number of people that do not know that a cup blade can function as both the belly blade and the snow blade and do not know how to do the switch is kind of mind boggling as many of these are that are out there. So I figured what the hell I would do it. Cause I had a couple guys ask about it anyhow. Um, now before I get into this, I do believe don't quote me on this because it's been a long time since I've been into the Kenneth Updike book on these things, which that's like the Cub Bible. I think, I think it's just called Farmall Cub and Cub Cadet by Kenneth Up, Updike or something like that, but it's something to that effect. Anyhow, I'm pretty sure that there is a very early version of this blade that will not switch. I think it's just a snow blade. Don't quote me on that, because I don't think I've ever actually seen one. But, regardless, this is a... I thought the model number of this blade used to be on it. On one of the sides. But it's got a fair bit of use on it since then. But this is this is the blade that you see the most. Oh, right there. Cub, blade, cub grater blade. Um... See, because of the sun glare. Anyway, the model number's right there. I don't know why I cannot see that spot right there because of the way the sun is. So, anyhow, um, to put it underneath the tractor real easy, all you need is the wishbone that goes in between the final drives and then these little brackets here. Um, I don't fully understand why, although I do believe that there's a couple different versions of this wish, wishbone as well, that do, and I think one of them does not use all this fancy stuff going on here. It just comes up and catches these two holes, but this is the version that we have. But anyway, all you need is that wishbone and then the boomerang that goes on the rock shaft. And that's all you need to put it or use it as a belly blade. It's you got bolts there on the final drive, and then this version you got this triangle bracket so that it catches these holes rather than these holes. And then it mounts there, and then you go here on the boomerang, and it functions as the belly blade. And then you got all your lift rigging that goes and you also need the boomerang for this because on this one you got your pin that's part of the rock shaft and then it uses this second bolt hole down here but you need the boomerang to make it work i guess you don't technically need the boomerang you can probably make it work with a bolt in the washer or something if you really need to but this is the way it was supposed to be from the factory and then you get your push rod and your lift arm um this and this dad actually made because when we got this it was all incomplete um this is see what all dad had to make this this and this and we had this and that and the horseshoe yeah that doesn't got any red paint so dad made that that and that and how, how all that, well, I shouldn't say how all that came up missing. It's probably still sitting in the barn wherever the hell. Because this came with our 57. Um, the, actually, all pretty much all of the implements we have came with the 57. So, um, but anyhow, so this, this lift rigging pretty much just camps out on this tractor because this is all this one does is either has it on the belly or has it on the nose for pushing snow. Um, but it just got the bracket that hooks on the two, or bolts to the two frame holes here. And you got, this was the uh, cross hole that your cultivator mounts go in. And there's adapter blocks that go in that are, I think it's like a one by one or an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter or whatever, the square block that goes in and your lock bolt or, uh, hold them in. And then it's got your through hole for your bolt that holds the horseshoe on. So hang on a minute here all right sorry about that so that's how the lift rigging goes on um so for that i mean that's basically i don't really want to take this back off just to turn around and show you how to put it back on because it's really damn simple um but we'll show you how that flops to the front 
and I got my starter problem figured out on this. Um, the button here on the starter, apparently the original one, it wasn't original. It clearly wasn't original the tractor. It was newer than the tractor, but the one that before this one um, must have shorted out, ground out, something went foobar in it, and it was grounded right to the starter because couldn't get nothing to do anything, couldn't get nothing to do anything. And I took the starter off, took the button off, the button was dirty. I figured out oh, maybe it's not making contact. So I took the starter, took the button apart, cleaned it up. And while I had the button off of it, I hooked the battery charger up to the starter and the vise and ground it out and touched off the uh, lead on the battery charger onto the lug on the starter and the starter ran fine. So I knew there was nothing wrong with the starter. Put the button back on, hooked the battery charger up to the lug on the starter and ground it off the body of the starter. And when you do that, it should act like you got hooked up to a battery when you push the handle and touch the button down, it should crank. Hooked the battery charger up, turned the battery charger on, battery charger went to full charge and popped the breaker or the internal breaker and the charger. I was like, oh, something's messed up. And I didn't know because these have like a phenolic, like this type of material in there is an insulator to keep the contact from touching the, the housing of the switch. All that looked good. So the only thing I could think is there's something on the stem somewhere that was grounding out, which you can't take any of that apart. Cause it's all like, it's riveted together. It's, it's not really a rivet. It, they turn the stem down, put the contact on, and then like use the rivet punch and so you can't really take it apart, clean up, put it back together. So for 14 bucks on eBay, I got another switch. I looked, I looked hard as hell. I tried to find a USA made switch, cannot do it. They were all Chinese. I even specifically searched in Google, USA made international starter button switch. Can't find them. They're all these Chinese pieces of shit. But anyway, it's what it is. I guess I could have tried to go to the IH dealer, but it probably would have been the same switch in an IH box. Probably what it would have been. So I don't know. It's enough to piss you off a little bit. So I did that, and then it was still cranking kind of slow, and I was back here wiggling the uh, battery cable while it was cranking and wiggled the ground cable, and it started cranking faster. So I just went and got a ground cable for it. Um, fortunately, the shortest one they had was 15-inch. Would have been nice to have a shorter one. So the one that came off of it was only like 8, 9 inches maybe. And it looped from here around but anyway so now she wings over like nothing but anyway we gotta pull it outside here so we can get some room oh and i got stuff change oil in it because it's due for an oil change so I guess we'll do that too while I'm at it. set it down enough to get the, get some weight off the pin Oops. and then you can leave it like that for a minute
and then the blade drops free. And then, as long as you ate your Wheaties this morning, you drag it out from underneath the tractor, it's got to come out this way because the lift spring there won't go that way. You drag it around the front of the tractor and get your bolts lined up. on you if you don't. So there's that. And then you need this guy. So if you're just pushing dirt or whatever with it, you don't necessarily need, you don't necessarily want it to float. You just hook that right into here. This guy right here is a float link. And it goes here like this. And like this. And then, well, here, let me pick it up a little bit. And then that, if I can do it, will lift the blade. It gives it about four or five inches of float separate from the, uh, lift linkage for following contour and whatnot like what you want when you're plowing snow so now once that's done you got to flip your skid shoes over which for that you need a a ratchet wrench works the best five eighths three corners And then you end up with something about like that. Um, there's, you got two height settings. I run mine all the way down because I always say I got a gravel driveway and usually even all the way down isn't even enough. You still end up grabbing some stones unless the ground's froze. But uh, you can do that. You got one extra, or you got one setting up which puts them about level with the cutting edge or if you got a asphalt or concrete driveway and you just want to scrape the thing clean, you'll even flip it over so you can just set the cutting edge right down and, scalp all the snow off and have a clean driveway so you can leave it like that or if you want a little bit more push capacity um farm all offered it as an optional attachment obviously they're they're hard to find now as original but they're really easy to re replicate uh an extension plate that bolts on top of the mall board with these bolt holes uh, i think this is of what i think that's about six inches um but that makes things a lot better so or gives you a lot more pushing capacity i guess i should say carry capacity whatever you want to call it 
so throw that on there and that's pretty much all there is to it like i say adding that extra back plate makes things a whole lot better especially if you get anything up over about six inches of snow of snow in a snowfall and you start pushing and it'll just pile up and roll over the back of the blade this gives it enough height that'll actually curl it around and keep it in front of the tractor so and the same thing this 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 float link which again was ih offered with the the blade kit but it's probably one of them deals where that was the first thing to get lost so you don't find very many original ones but dad copied an original one to make this so but it's real easy all it is, is a few pieces of flat or a couple three i can't talk three pieces of flat stock and you make a clevis on one side and a and a bar on the other and get yourself a float link and I just leave the, the wishbone underneath the back axle because come springtime, the blade's going to come off the front and go back underneath the belly, and it's going to go back to being a grater. So now that should be everything with the blade. And I did, I did uh, it's probably been three years ago now, we had a two-week spell where it got down below zero sustained, and we were getting a bunch of snow. So I actually took a piece of canvas and made a... Uh, half curtain to block off part of the grill to get this thing to run warmer but i really only put that on when it gets super cold for long periods of time so but that's just it it's actually a piece of uh extra tarp that came with the tarp that i put on the seed wagon um just cut a piece and bent some wire that would hook into the grill screen and I need to come up with a better way to hook it on the grill screen so you don't got to take the grill screen off to put it on. That would make things handier. So that goes on if it gets cold, but it's not cold enough to warrant putting that on now, so it's not going to go on. However, now we got to wrestle these heavy bastards on there. And that puts the chains on. Um, we run 
at least on this we run field chains with the the crossbar or the cross chains that tie two bars together so that they stay up on top of the lugs because the problem with 23 degree tires like this that wasn't necessarily a problem on the old 45 degree tires is you get uh, these are actually the chains for the sears um you put regular single single bar or single crossbar chains on the the crossovers just fall in between the lugs and they don't bite and they basically do nothing for you so these chains are 10 times better and then the ones that are better than these yet that i wish these were but they're they're, they're quite a bit more expensive is the ones that actually have the ice hooks welded on the lugs they got they put like it's either two or four times on them so that they will literally actually like bite but don't start spinning because whatever you're spinning on top of you will dig a hole and you will dig it fast now these don't do too bad honestly if i had one more set of wheel weights on it these chains would probably be perfectly adequate and really the only place i struggle is climbing the hill because i push snow up well you've seen the video i push snow up the hill and into the yard because technically i know it's this way in michigan i don't know if it's that way in any other state i'm assuming it probably is kind of a universal thing it's technically illegal to push snow across the road and nothing burns me more than the people that do push snow across the road and then don't clean the mess up they just leave all their shit that ever that spilled off the side of the blade they just freaking leave it but i digress so chains are on blade swapped around so i guess with that all i got left that needs to do is drop the oil real quick and change the oil and filter and she will be good to go so i need to go find me a bucket this is a little bit of a pain with the lift rigging in the way, but not terrible. So this one here drains the filter housing. And these things, these tubes do tend to sludge up a little bit, even with regular oil changes, just because it's a low spot and there's no oil circulation there. It just fills up and then the oil stays stagnant. So if you see any sludge in there, it's nothing to be too worried about. That being said, this poor old girl is probably slightly overdue for an oil change. Seems like last year I never got a chance to do it, so she's technically going on two years. Wow. I don't think that necessarily needs to be that tight. Especially since running in the winter, you tend to get condensation and and condensation leads to water in the oil and it doesn't necessarily get ever get run long enough to really get the engine up to temperature so you never really get get the water boiled out of it Remember right? Shut it up a little bit. A little bit. Come on. Point. There we go. Three quarters. There's an the eleven sixteenths. Nope, three quarters. Just a loose three quarters.
there sitting green for a few minutes and go from there. Green or the oil pan button back up. So we can drop our new filter in. The new gasket's already sitting on there. filter cover on these does not have to be super duper tight because a they're really low oil or low pressure oiling system and b you don't want to extrude that uh, rubber washer and then it's going to start leaking on you so just good and tight plenty so anyway i can dump some oil in the crankcase and i'm going to change the oil in the air cleaner while i'm at it and we should be good to go and there you go that's how to put your snow blade on your cub and change the oil. Not that changing the oil is rocket science. Of course, the blade is not rocket science either. But like I say, it's still surprising how many people don't know that that's the same as a, that blade will go in either spot if you got the right brackets. So anyhow, got that done just in time for it to be warm. And tomorrow it's actually supposed to start raining. So that'll take care of the rest of our snow. I'm hoping Friday the rest of this shit will be gone and then we can go check on wheat and hay, so. But tomorrow's obviously Thanksgiving, so I'm not gonna do anything tomorrow. Um, so yeah. On a side note, did anybody see, I just saw it this morning. Um, the way I understood it, it's a guy out of California had bought uh, Beechwood Manor, which for those of you that don't know, that is Hank Williams Sr.'s mansion, whatever you want to call it, 260 acre or 268 acre ranch in Nashville. The house dates back pre Civil War. Beautiful, beautiful house, huge. And some jackass from California bought it last year under the promise that he was going to restore it. Although I saw the before pictures and I do not know why it needed to restore it. I'd have it probably could use some updating and just other than that left it the way it was because the inside of that house was gorgeous and now he's starting to tear it down already got the front porch knocked off of it they took a tore a bunch of trim out of the outside knocked all the banisters off and now there's a petition going around to try to save it it's still savable the way it is but i just saw that this morning apparently it started it's finally starting to make the news i mean i get it some guy bought it, he owns it. Technically, he should be able to do whatever he wants, but that's, even without the tide of country music, it's a, it's a pre-Civil War mansion that survived in immaculate shape. It needs to be put on a historical registry just on that note alone, not to mention the myriad of country stars that have owned it since Hank. In my mind, it should be treated the same way as Graceland with Elvis, but um there's a petition called uh save beachwood manor and i uh i signed it this morning because to me like i say that's bullshit just another piece of history history they're trying to erase but what the hell nobody cares about history anymore But I just wanted to make some people aware of that. Maybe I can get a few more people to sign the petition because it's just, it, to me, it's bullshit. You just type in save Beachwood Manor dot, or save, yeah, say, type in save Beachwood dot org into Google and it'll, it, it's the first website that comes up. And it's got pictures of before the guy bought it and the inside and then it's got pictures of the way it just, it's enough to make you want to throw up. But you go on there and it gives you their spiel and you scroll down to the bottom and there's the thing where you can 
sign so anyhow I think that's all I need to talk about what do you think teeter hmm what do you think you probably think you didn't get your nap in today did you yeah you didn't get your new nap in today so anyway I guess I gotta go over mom and dad's and do some stuff now so get this video put together and see where things go from there so that's it for this one we'll catch you guys on the next one